coming up on Movie Buff. Grab your cocktail shakers for Sex and the City. Iron Maiden's Bruce Dickinson unveils his first film. And the latest comedy outing from Martin Lawrence. The wait is over. Amazing shoes and cosmopolitans at the ready. Sex and the City, the movie, is finally here. So the film picks up with Carrie, Samantha, Charlotte and Miranda four years on from where the TV show ended. Now this is tricky, as clearly we don't want to give anything away, but obviously the girls' love lives are at the centre of the action. One big relationship in particular, that as Carrie reveals to Charlotte and Miranda over dinner, is getting serious. We decided to get married. <laughs> and I'm deaf. I'm so excited! Everybody is looking. Sorry! I'm so sorry, everyone, but this is my friend, and she just got engaged, and she has been going out with the man for 10 years! How it all works out, of course, you'll have to wait and see. Now, almost as important as the girls themselves are the clothes that they wear. Even more amazing than the TV show, the film sees the Fab Four kitted out in some outfits to die for. Kim Cattrall, who plays Samantha, loved getting dressed for work each day. I love the wardrobe on Sex and the City. I, I call it my guilty pleasure. However, Sex and the City, the movie, is not just an hour and 40 minutes of good times. As Sarah Jessica Parker explains, it will take you on an emotional roller coaster ride. I mean, we really didn't want to tell a story about four women running around, drinking liberally, and having interesting but anonymous sexual relationships, you know, that we really wanted to tell a story that was substantive and that was thinking and um, provocative and filled with sadness and hope and joy and um, all the things that you know, are part of being a grown-up person. It is all of those things, so gather all of your best friends and get ready for one night to remember as Sex and the City the movie is out now. You can usually find him giving it some on stage with his long-haired leather-clad mates from Iron Maiden. Well, don't tell the band, but Bruce Dickinson's been moonlighting. The heavy metal legend has written his first screenplay, which has now been turned into a movie called Chemical Wedding. Be assured that something wicked... He's come back, hasn't he? This will come. But don't be fooled by Bruce's music credentials. This isn't an amateur go at making a thriller. It's it's not one of these sort of like rock and roll, uh, you know, heavy metal track every five minutes and people getting chopped up. Um, it's about bringing back one of England's most eccentric black magicians, Alistair Crowley. Brit Thesp Simon Callow plays him. The whole thing's directed by Julian Doyle, who edited Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits and Brazil. It's been described as Harry Potter for adults, as it features the odd raunchy scene or two. But not in any way gratuitous. These were all vital to the plot. He was involved in sexual magic, so he couldn't make a film without... I mean, you say, well, what is sexual magic? So we invented our own sort of sexual magic of where these ceremonies and these rites were. And we did them. And I mean, you have to do them half tongue-in-cheek because he seemed to be doing some things half in tongue-in-cheek, like the real around the Crowley. And he would do... He was gross. He was intelligent. Uh, then he was stupid. Just a small taster of one of the most controversial figures of the early 20th century. And what these two don't know about him isn't worth knowing. He's on the cover, for example, of Sgt Pepper uh, at Lennon's request. Uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin uh, bought his house in Loch Ness. So he really was the first, the world's first rock star. With just as many groupies, it seems, although without the guitar. So if you're over 18 and are partial to a bit of sorcery, then head down to your cinema to catch Chemical Wedding to see if, in the words of Queen, it's a kind of magic. It's showtime. Everybody has one, and at times, some of us wish we hadn't. Yes, I'm talking about families. And that's exactly what new comedy Welcome Home Roscoe Jenkins is all about. Martin Lawrence plays a successful talk show host who has all the trappings of celebrity as he lives it up in LA with his good-looking fiancée, who just so happens to be a TV star too. But before they can say their I do's, they need to meet the parents. So when Lawrence decides to take her to see the folks back home in the deep south, trouble soon ensues. That's my cousin Reggie. You got your jewelry? You got your purse? All right, because the boy could con Jesus. 
Jenkins. Hollywood then came to town. Ah, what's up? <laughs> what up, cuz? What up, cuz? How, how you doing? How you doing? Come on, man. Give me a hug, man. What's up? Oh, man, look at what you, uh, look, you got them picnic tablecloth fans. Hey, boo-boo, let me get another picnic basket. Yes, his family are there to remind him that going home is no holiday, and his big city ways don't go down well with their small town values. But at the end of the day, your kin are always there for you. And sometimes returning to your roots just reminds you how important seeing the funny side of life really is. Do what you wanna do. He started.